Oh my God, I feel like I'm losing my voice. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the 23rd day of the 25 Days of Kitmas. For this video, I wanted to cover all of the pro tips that I have for building your makeup kit. I understand that kit building is super, super overwhelming, especially when you're just beginning as a makeup artist. There's so many different options. There's so many different products. A lot of artists like different things. And so sometimes just using people's suggestions are really confusing. I wanna to try to help you guys out as much as I can just by telling you guys what you should basically look for whenever you are building a makeup kit. I'm not necessarily going to be going into specific products because I did go through my whole entire freelance makeup kit and what products I carry in it. So if you guys haven't binged through the rest of my Kitmas series, I will put it up here in a playlist for you guys. And also don't forget to stay till the end because I'm going to give you about four different tips of how you can build your kit on a budget. So when you're building a professional makeup artist kit, it's really important to consider three different things. And this is quality, multifunction and also sanitation. Now these three are all different key elements that you guys really need to consider when you're building a professional makeup artist kit. So number one is quality. A lot of beginners think that they need like all high-end makeup from Sephora and that's totally not true. It's really important not to confuse Sephora makeup with professional grade quality makeup because they are not the same thing. <laughs> Sephora makeup is really commercialized. It's seen everywhere worldwide. If I told you a brand from Sephora, you'd most likely know which brand that is. With professional grade quality, this is the stuff that only professionals tend to use or tend to gravitate towards. It's just not commercialized or heavily publicized in the media. So a lot of people in general don't really know about these brands, but they are brands that pro artists have been using for years. My absolute favorite pro artist website, if you guys have not been following my channel for a while, is Camera Ready Cosmetics. Now they have over like 100 brands on their website and they're all professional makeup artist brands. Some of these brands are overlapping into Sephora, but most of them you probably have never heard about and they are super super good quality brands like they are rated and tested by professional makeup artists if not some of the lines were actually developed by professional makeup artists and they have created products to suit other makeup artists meaning that all their packaging is makeup artist friendly it's really easy to use by makeup artists on set so that's what I mean by quality I don't necessarily mean high-end products because a lot of these pro artist brands honestly are pretty affordable. I think we all know about the RCMA powder, for instance, and that stuff is only around 12 to $15 and you're getting a ton of product in it. So you don't necessarily need to go to Sephora and buy like the Laura Mercier powder for $40. Like you can find products that are professional grade quality that look really good on camera that are pretty affordable. Now I know that a lot of beginners do not have the budget to go and spend all this money on products. So I really want you guys to understand that you can't just look for the cheapest option just because you think it's going to save you money. You don't want to go to like the Dollar Tree, for instance, and buy all the makeup in there. That's why I heavily suggest going on Camera Ready Cosmetics, browsing through their website, and since it is a professional makeup artist website, you can apply for a pro discount and that will give you up to 40% off on brands. Each brand or different website does have different qualifications. So make sure you look those up and then submit all your documents and you're ready to go. The other thing I wanna talk about in terms of quality is the packaging. Now, a lot of people don't really consider this. I'm talking about quality as in durability for packaging. You're going to be opening bottles, flipping open containers. You're going to be rustling them around because you're gonna be throwing them in and out of your car. You need that packaging to not only be very durable, but you also need it to be very sturdy and not breakable as well. So that's another thing you have to keep in mind as far as the actual quality of the items that you're buying. Next thing I want to cover is multifunction. Now what I mean by multifunction is basically being able to use one thing for multiple different purposes. Not every single thing can have the ability to be multifunction inside of your kit, but the more multifunction the products that you carry are inside of your kit, the better off that you're going to be. Not only are you going to save yourself money because you are buying less products and using up less products, but it's also just going to be more convenient for you on site too. And I'm going to give you some examples of this because because some people may not realize that you can do these things. For instance, powders. Powders can be used for a multitude of different things. Just because it's a bronzer powder, for instance, doesn't have to be used for bronzer necessarily. All powders are pretty much formulated almost the exact same way. And so you can use bronzers for like transition colors on your eyeshadows, or you can use eyeshadows for blushes. Like you can do multiple different things with them. So if you buy like a powder palette that has different colors inside of it, you can use it for all sorts of different things. I think we've all heard of that Makeup Forever Fly palette. It's basically a bunch of colors with all primary colors inside of it and other ones that you might need like a black and a white. And you can use those paints 
paints for almost anything that you want. You can make them into cream eyeshadow. You can mix them as lip colors. You can even mix them as foundations as well. Get products like that that you can use for multiple different functions because then that'll save you a ton of money and a ton of space in your kit. The next thing I want to touch on is sanitation. You can be the absolute best makeup artist and the most incredible makeup artist in the entire world. But if your sanitation is not there and you give somebody an eye infection, like your reputation will go downhill very quickly. So please keep in mind that sanitation is the number one most important things just besides being a good skilled makeup artist. With this in mind, you have to pick up products that can easily be sanitized or can easily be used hygienically on site. I think one of my best examples that I could possibly give for this would be that I have this Too Faced Born This Way concealer inside of my kit. And as we all know, we cannot hygienically use these on people unless you open the tube, and then you scrape it onto a palette and then use a brush and work off of there. But that's just really inconvenient a lot of the times because you have to take multiple different steps to be able to be hygienic with your clients. So instead of messing around with a doe foot applicator like that, I just depotted all of mine into these little squeeze tubes and I have gone over this and how I depotted them and everything in one of my other videos. I'll go ahead and link up my depotting video in case you guys are interested in watching it. But I depotted all my Too Faced Born This Way concealers into these containers. And now it's a little bit more convenient for me to use on site. All I need to do is just flip open this top and then dump it on the palette and then I can work directly out of there. You can then also of course look for products already that come with pumps so you don't have to depot things. For instance the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I always buy them in like these little travel size versions. They already have a pump to them so I don't even need to scrape anything out. I don't need to depot anything. Like they just come conveniently with a pump already so all I have to do is pump it onto my palette and work off of there and I'm done. So find ways like that that are easily usable by you as a makeup artist on site and you can use hygienically. Now my last thing I wanted to go over is some budget friendly tips when you were building your makeup kit. This is kind of overlapping with the concepts that I just talked about, but I kind of wanted to elaborate on some things. The so number one is what I touched on before is applying for those pro artist discounts. If you guys are licensed, it's a lot easier to get pro artist discounts. Although sometimes with actual pro artist brands, they want to specifically recognize makeup artists. So I have heard from one of my makeup artists, for instance, that I work with that is a licensed cosmetologist. She actually told me one time that Charlotte Tilbury specifically wouldn't actually approve her cosmetology license. They want to have people that are specialized as makeup artists. So a certification from a makeup academy actually means more to them than just having a cosmetology license. So I got approved not being licensed and just having a makeup artist certification as opposed to actually having a cosmetology license. And it all depends on the brands. As I said before, most often though, if you do have an actual makeup artist certification, you can get all sorts of different professional makeup artist discounts. I've gotten ones through MAC, I've gotten ones through Makeup Forever, I've gotten ones through Camera Ready Cosmetics and Charlotte Tilbury. There is a very fine line between being a makeup enthusiast and just doing it as a hobby and then also being a professional makeup artist. If you do not have a professional makeup artist background, as in you have professional training doing makeup somewhere, then you're not considered a professional to me or a lot of other professional makeup artist brands. And I honestly stand by that because if you haven't had makeup artist training or makeup artist quality, qualifications, then you're not really considered a professional in your field. So that's why I decided to go through my four years of MAC makeup artistry training. I was a MAC artist for a while, and then I decided to freelance and get my makeup artist certification. And then next year, I'm actually going for my esthetician's license. So if you are a beginner makeup artist, you definitely need to have some sort of professional makeup artist training, something on a piece of paper that shows people that you are a professional in your field. It's not only a great accomplishment for you, but it also makes your clients feel a little bit more at ease too. And you can also get approved for a lot of other things having that qualification. So number two is buying palettes. Buying palettes in general is going to save you a lot of money and a lot of space in your kit because when you have palettes, you're not going to be buying all these individual products. Everything can just be in one compact space and it's usually a little bit more cost efficient that way too. For instance, I at one point in time had this palette inside of my kit. Now I did depot it, but it is the RCMA VK11 palette. It just looks like this. It's a cream palette. And with these palettes, they can be used for multiple different functions. Creams can be used for foundations, concealers, contours, bronzers, highlighters, anything you want them to be. So please don't go out and buy like separate bronzer palettes and separate contour palettes because you don't need it with just having a foundation palette like this, I promise you. So I think these RCMA palettes were probably like $80, $85, I wanna say. And while that seems like a lot of money, if you think about it, you'll buy a liquid foundation and maybe buy two of those things to equal $80. But instead of having two foundations, you have a whole entire range of foundations instead. This also is the same with powder foundation palettes or blush palettes or bronzer palettes. 
They can have multiple different uses and also you have a whole entire range of them right in your fingertips. Instead of spending $30 for one blush, you're spending $100 for six blushes. I know that palettes just looking at the price tag of them are naturally going to be more than just one unit of something. But overall though, if you think about it, you are definitely spending less over time and you're getting more bang for your buck than just buying singular products. If you do end up buying singular products, please do not feel like you need to have every single color and every single shade inside of a range. And this is specifically talking about foundations and concealers. And I agree that you have to be as versatile and have as many colors accessible to you as possible to help everybody. But please realize that you can mix, like you can mix and use your artistry skills to make custom foundation colors. You realistically only need about four to six foundation colors in each of the ranges. For instance, I carry the NARS Natural Radiant Foundation in my kit and they have over 30 shades available and I only carry six. Now with this, I do highly recommend you get the lightest shade in the range, you get the darkest shade, and then you get neutral colors in between. Why I say get neutral colors is because you can have foundation adjusters that adjust undertones. This is also teaching you to become a better artist because you really need to know color theory when it comes to being a makeup artist. With foundation adjusters, I usually carry a straight white shade by Face Atelier. And then I also carry two other foundation adjusters too. So I carry the heat shade, which is a red orange shade. Obviously it can make it more of a cool tone. And then I have blaze, which is more of a yellow tone. And this is going to add warmth into your foundation. They do also have two other color adjusters that I've thought about putting in my kit as well. I'm just still playing around with them, but they have one that is an olive mixture that is more of a green tone. And then they also have one that is blue that kind of neutralizes out tones. And I'm not going to be going into like color theory or adjusting or anything, because I know people have a lot of questions about that, but just learning color theory as an artist is going to be your best friend. You need to know all your primary colors, your secondary colors, your tertiary colors, the complementary colors. Just learn the color wheel as a makeup artist and you will be 100% okay. Next tip is consider the clientele that you have before you start buying anything. If you, for instance, want to maybe go into bridal like I am specifically, you don't don't need all these fancy glitters. You don't need neon eyeliners. You don't need all these like really bright, colorful eyeshadow palettes because you're not going to use them <laughs> unless you go into like Middle Eastern bridal culture or something where they use bright and fun colors like that. You don't really need a lot. Like mostly your brides, especially if you're in Western cultures like me, are going to go with all neutrals, mostly nude lips, maybe a red every once in a while. It's going to be pretty basic makeup. With that being said, it's really important not to overbuy for your kit. Like if you are not going to realistically use that and you know that it's not going going to be very popular. Like you're going to waste a ton of money just by not considering the type of clients that you have. If you have somebody that has like a wild preference, that's kind of like out of your niche, they will most likely tell you ahead of time. You should be able to go out and buy things really quickly and have it for that person. The last thing I wanted to cover really quickly is do not put makeup in your kit specifically just to be trendy or just because another makeup artist has it in their kit. Now I understand that it's really important to follow general trends, but some trends can get kind of wild and I don't want you guys to just automatically think that just because they're trendy people are going to ask for those. Please listen to your clients. If it is not something that is requested very often with your clients, don't buy it. Like don't just get sucked into the media and get sucked into all the trends that are happening. There's one point in time where the fluffy brow trend was going on where people just used brow wax and spiked it up to the gods. Hardly anybody asks for that. It's a trendy thing. The only way this might be a thing and be like a legitimate concern of yours is if you're in the fashion industry. Of course, fashion is going to be really trendy. They're going to be very current. So they're probably going to employ some of the current trendy makeup styles that are going on. But if you guys just do bridal or you do film and television, none of that's going to take place. Also, please do not just put makeup inside of your kits without doing research first about the actual products or if you're actually going to use that yourself. Makeup artistry is super, super personal and makeup kits are super personal. Every artist is going to be different. You're never going to see an artist with the exact same kit and the exact same products because they don't work in the same way. So I highly encourage instead of just automatically going out and buying all of these shade ranges because you think that it's going to work because another makeup artist recommended it, buy one shade of that foundation, which is your foundation shade test it out on yourself for at least a month straight and see how it wears, see how it layers with all the rest of the products inside of your kit on yourself and see if it's going to work for you personally as an artist. Please don't go in automatically get really excited about buying this new foundation for your kit and buy every single shade inside of the range. You are going to waste a ton of money. Anyways, that is about it for this video. If you guys have any questions, definitely go ahead and leave those down below. If you guys did enjoy this video, definitely go ahead and give it a big thumbs up as well as also subscribing down to my channel. And also don't forget to turn on those post notifications 
weekends. I do have a couple more days of Kitmas. So if you guys are excited for those and want to get notified of when I post those, then definitely go ahead and turn on the notifications. And as always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.